Welcome to Fort Worth, Texas, and Amon G. Carter Stadium, home of the TCU Horned Frogs. This matchup today, part of the lifeblood of the sport, a rivalry game where the results will be... And the Bears will get us underway with the opening kickoff. From a couple of yards deep, he'll bring it out. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. So the TCU Horn Frogs return team didn't help matters out much there. And the adrenaline is pumping on overdrive in games like this, guys, and it's crucial to get your emotions under control. No doubt. In rivalry games, you've got to limit the mental errors and you've got to limit the penalties because those will kill you, Bob. And you've got to come out under control. It means so much. We know that. The fans are all talking about it. But it's just football. He'll ride his man on the option. He'll pitch it. He's out past the 35. Off he goes. The 30. He's at the 10. And he takes it all the way. They couldn't stop him. Touchdown, TCU. Yeah, these offensive coordinators tell you they want to start fast and they want to establish the run game. That is exactly what you did. First drive, you hand the football off, making the big explosive run, setting the tone for this football game. to attempt to try. And he's got the extra point, and it's 7-0 to start this way. That drive took no time at all. A couple of plays and finished it with a long run for the touchdown. And he takes this from inside the five. And he loses the ball deep in his own end. It's recovered by the kicking team, and they'll steal a possession. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. The hand to the running back. And how about that interior defense stuffing the run for nothing? And the Horned Frogs will hustle to the line. To the air. It's Hoover. And there's going to be a loss on that play. Just run out of bounds and avoiding the contact. Third play of the drive, and they need to take advantage of this field position by making something happen on third and long. The freshman able to get home with the sack. When you got third and this long, everybody knows what's coming. It's going to be a pass. Defensive linemen get to tee off. They know exactly what's coming. Go get the quarterback. It is your dream. That is what you live for. It's what you practice in the offseason for. I want sacks just like that. So they'll send out the field goal unit. He's going to try to knock one through from 49 yards away. Never a doubt for this big-footed guy. 49-yard field goal is good. Set to go. Here he comes from inside his own five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. So Baylor's offense has its first opportunity of the day. Here are our impact players for this game, and it goes beyond executing an assignment to make an impact in the game. Yeah, obviously we were talking to both coaching staffs this week, and we asked them who needs to step up and play while they immediately pointed to these guys right here. They are the key for their respective teams. Yeah, and they don't always show up in the box goal, but these are the guys are the leaders. These are the guys getting everybody organized and have to play well for their team to succeed. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Offense breaks the huddle. It's third down. Looking to pass. It's Fenley. He looks that one in nicely. He's going to have enough to pick up the first down as they stop him at the 33-yard line. 
across to pass it. He just never got started going forward. A huge loss of eight on the play. And now on second down for this offense. They'll run it out of the shotgun. Runs ahead and powers his way for four yards out to the 30. It'll take some work to get to the sticks. It's third and long from the 30. He's looking downfield to throw. And the freshman will chalk up a sack. Things working pretty well for this defense out of the dime package and still getting plenty of heat on the quarterback. Get off the rock. Understand the situation. All the fast guys got the back end covered. It's my job to seek and destroy the quarterback. Great job by the defensive line rushing after that guy and getting him on the ground. The Bears line up to punt it away. Getting our first look of the afternoon at the punter. He gets the first one off, and he was busier than he hoped in that loss last week, being called on five times. Coverage team able to put a stop to that return at the 42-yard line. TCU has it back in the Horn Frogs go on offense. They kicked a field goal on the last drive, Jesse. They've got the lead. Don't make a dumb mistake, but maintain your aggressive play calling. Yeah, no doubt. And I think it's the play caller right now just taking a look at that script he's got in front of him and finding out where are my playmakers, who can we take advantage of on this defense to get a touchdown here, babe. Yeah, and just keep moving the ball down the field. Just execute a little bit better in the red zone. There's no need to panic. We're moving the football, and we got the lead. The Horned Frogs are in the hurry up. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. That'll get the job done and move the chains, and they'll mark the ball at the 45. And the Horned Frogs with the first and 10. To the ground with the back. And he has a solid game before the defense bottles him up. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. He leaves it with his back. Dragged down to the turf, but not before getting the first down. The Horned Frogs are moving quickly down the field. Give to the running back. After the pickup of nine, it's second and one. After the good pickup on first down, let's see if they keep it on the ground. Motion from the offense. They got him looking wrong, but they're going to throw it. And the ball comes out. What a disastrous play. Defense coming up with a huge fumble recovery. And the quarterback just ran out of time there, and they were able to knock it free. Quarterbacks have got to do a great job keeping two hands on the football, especially in passing situations like that, because you know defenders are swatting at the ball. Even if you can't see them, these guys, they're 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six. they've got long arms. They're trying to rip and tug away and get that ball out of your hands. The QB will learn from this play. He's got to do a better job with his fundamentals. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Not what they had in mind to start this drive. Here comes second and 13. They'll try to pop the draw. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And the running game has been going in the wrong direction. They'll try to get their first positive play of the drive here on third down. They'll throw it to the back on the screen. Defense was not fooled by that screen to the back, and they'll stop him short of the marker. It'll be fourth down. And the Bears will bring the punt team onto the field. A fairly short distance here toward the sidelines. Not his best work. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. That last drive and the turnover, not what you're looking for when you have the lead, Jesse. Yeah, and really, I think for them, it's just staying out of their own way. They're making plays. They've got the playmakers to go and win this game, so it's just a matter of executing better. Yeah, executing better, understanding I still got the lead. Put a drive together here and build on that lead. Bulldozes his way through. Good pick up there. They'll move the chains in their setup at the 41. Well, I know the tight end did some good things after the catch, but got to give the quarterback credit, too, for the location of the throw. Because he put it out in front of his big man, he was able to make the catch and accelerate, creating some distance there between him and the defense. They'll go to the ground. 
and he finds some solid space, makes a nice game before the defense is able to stop it. And the Horned Frogs racing to the line in the hurry up. Wide out in motion. Out of the gun, the running back has it. And they'll bring him down, but not before he picks up the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Back to throw, it's Hoover. He fires to the left side. He's got it downfield for a huge game. And the quarterback knew exactly where he wanted to go. The football had time, spins the ball deep. Nice job by this offense, understanding what the defense has given them and creating an explosive play. He's got it down to the one-yard line right on the doorstep of Pater. Second and goal for this offense. Tries again to get it in. Going right back to the well, and this time he finds water. Gets it into the end zone for the touchdown. They want to finish the season strong, and man, are they doing that here in this Week 11 performance. The best running backs are the guys that can just sniff out the end zone. That running back showed you all of his freakish ability on that play. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And with the extra point, they now have a three-possession lead at 17. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. He'll bring it back from inside his five. And the returner is stuck. Baylor has it back, and here comes the Bear offense. To say this has been a slow start is a bit of an understatement, and they really need to get it going here, Jesse. That's right. The opponent, they're firing on all cylinders right out of the gate. Offensively for this unit, they've been slow and struggling. They need an explosive play to wake themselves up. Yeah, and it's just the first quarter, so it's not the end of the world. You've seen slow starts, but you've got to continue to pick and pick and pick until you find that play or, or that scheme that you can use against this defense. Got it in the middle, it's Burton. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. The Bears will snap it on first and ten. They're going to test the right side with this one. Showing off the arms. That's about as close as you can get to that marker, and it will be second and just a few breaths away from the first down. That's the end of the quarter, and TCU has the lead. They wanted to strike first and strike hard, and they've been able to do that here in the first quarter as we take a look at the stats. Now the challenge here, they've taken a punch, but they can't let it get out of hand as we start the second. To throw, it's Fenway. Hines his tight end. Stopped at the 41-yard line after the five-yard gain. Not the most productive half for this offense so far, but finally starting to get it in gear. First and ten. He finds his man. We had a barn burner the last time these two teams played, and no reason to expect anything else between these two bitter rivals. Attention to detail, and I think the sense of urgency, David, in a game like this just goes way up. And I think managing the emotions in these type of games, you, you know last year was a classic. Oh, oh, now oh, oh, you're oh, trying oh, to form oh, this year's identity of this team and go out and get a win in a big-time rivalry game. They'll line up for a second down play. He'll do it himself. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Ball is at the 41 as this defense tries to force the punt on third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. It's on target and complete. They make the stop, but the sweet rolling catch is plenty to give them a first down. And now a fresh set of downs for this offense. From the gun, running back gets to give. We'll give him a couple on that one. Second and eight coming up. Went to the running game on first down. Now here they come again. Off the play fake. They're trying to get to it. Just too much of a rush. And down goes the quarterback just behind the midfield strike at the 49. Play action pass success has a lot to do with selling that fake. You can tell defense was not buying it. Got in the backfield, got the big play. He 
Guys, they've come through on the first two third down tries. This one might be a little tough. Looking to throw, it's Finley. Trying to get to it. It's complete. He ended up going backwards on the play, and they will not convert that third down. And the Bears send out the punt unit. Let's see if he can help the coverage team out with this one. And no shot at a return here as the punt flies out of bounds. TCU has it back, and the Horn Frogs go on offense. Fires to the big fella. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him, too? I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt. He was going down. Great job form tackle. On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. Got his man to the left. Gets it all the way down to the 39-yard line. It'll be a first down. The Horned Frogs want to move quickly. Just beautiful. And that's a great feeling as a quarterback when you make that throw. It keeps your offense on the field. Keeps the offense in rhythm. Obviously not as good as throwing a touchdown pass, but I'll tell you this. Way better. And the defense will corral the quarterback. And down he goes at midfield. And they've been waiting for something good to happen with respect to getting after the quarterback, right? They're outside of the top 100 in the country in sacks per game. But finally now, you see they're generating this pass rush. Three sacks on the game so far. These guys are bringing serious heat. They are like sharks swarming and just getting after the passer. The give on the inside. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks. He's got 99 yards on the ground, and that's just another routine day for this guy who's been among the nation's leaders in rushing all season long. Throws to the wideout. And it slips through his fingers. Incomplete. That would have been a huge game if he could have held on. It's wise not to be too greedy, and they'll go ahead and send out the field goal unit. And he missed it. No good. So, guys, a missed opportunity to expand the lead. It's still a 17-point cushion. 17, zero. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. They've got nothing done so far, and they already find themselves in a three-possession hole, Jesse. Yeah, and as a head coach, you're wondering, what didn't I say? What didn't I do to get my team ready to go? Because we look like we're sleepwalking at this point. Nothing went well in the first quarter. You just say refresh. Like, let's try to find a way now. Ship into this lead. Try to make it somewhat manageable when we get to that. On third and long, he has to throw for it. A strike downfield. Putting together a real scoring thread here as they pick up the first down at the 36. Man, if I'm a defense, I got to find a way to get some more pressure on the quarterback or disrupt their timing and their rhythm. I can't give them these big chunk plays through the air. I got to be maybe a little bit more aggressive or do something a little bit different. They'll go back to work after the incompletion here, second and 10 from the 36. Looking to throw, it's Fenley. Quarterback can't pull the trigger and down he goes at the 41. Well, that's their third sack of the game, and we knew statistically coming into this game, this is one of the top 25 units in the nation getting after the quarterback. I just love how athletic they are up front, and they are giving this offensive line headaches and nightmares up to this point. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third and long, doesn't need to take the check down. And the pressure gets to him again. Another sack. And giving up three sacks a week ago. Now you've already given up four sacks. they got to find a way to protect their quarterback. Give him a little bit more time. The Bears will punt it away on fourth down. Fourth time tonight we've seen this guy come on to punt. 
a fairly short distance here toward the sidelines. Not his best work. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. We talk about settling for points, but sometimes when you have to settle for nothing, David, it can be demoralizing. Yeah, and it can dip. And the pass is intercepted. Takes it the other way. And he's going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Bay! I love this free safety and how he plays center field. And oftentimes, he's able to bait QBs into bad decisions. He did it right there. Made the quarterback think he was dropping one way, put his foot in the ground, got in front of that pass, and then showed you the wheels, returning it for a touchdown. Ready to try the point after. And the PAT will draw them one point closer. They're lining up to kick it off after the pick six, and that defense will come out feeling it. He'll return it. Rolling the dice to bring it out of the end zone did not work out as he stopped at the 13. TCU has it back in the Horned Frogs go on offense. The give to the back. He gets it all the way out to the 19-yard line. They pick up of six. You give him 105 yards rushing, and that should be no surprise. He's been among the nation's elite all season. Grabbed behind the line. It's Cook. And the defense able to drag him down, but not before. They'll recycle that down marker. I just love quarterbacks that aren't greedy and that aren't always trying to throw the home run ball, right? Second down, you're in your own end of the field. The guy you want to throw to is not open. Just find the bat. He'll go do something positive with it. This guy is a weapon, and you got to find him in the pass. And he'll run across the sidelines after the good game. Grabbed in the middle. It's James. And the Horned Frogs will keep this drive going. It's first and ten from the 38-yard line. From the gun, give on the inside. They wrestle him to the ground, but he's got plenty for a first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Quick release by the QB. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. The Horned Frogs want to crank the tempo. This offense is clicking, and clearly everything is working. The offensive coordinator is calling good plays. The quarterback and his unit is executing. And this defense right now, they have no answers. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Lost yardage on that last one. It's second and 11. How about the defensive end understanding football? Understanding that I got to keep outside contain. I'm responsible for the quarterback. Good job playing his responsibility. And how about getting that sucker on the ground? He's a pretty good athlete to be able to corral him, tackle him right in the middle of the field and get him to the ground. Unloads quickly. And the Horned Frogs have a first down. They are controlling the ball. Ninth play of the drive. Looking to pass inside the red zone. He's brought down, but he went backwards after that completion. Not the way they had it drawn up. They've got a solid drive working, but now looking at second and 11. Dropping back, it's Hoover. Quickly complete. And he'll make his way out of bounds after the solid pickup. They love to pick up this third down and get a fresh set with first and goal. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Pocket starts to collapse. Couldn't find anybody open, just threw it away. And that's a smart move. You want to avoid the turnover, especially in the red zone. It'll be fourth down. Absolutely perfect. And that lead grows even bigger. And let's check in with Kevin Connors in the studio. Kevin, dynamite matchup today, fellas. Let's show you what's going down. Mississippi State is ahead early in Stark Vegas, but that's not exactly Dak Prescott out there. This game is a long way from being over. They're up by seven over Georgia. 
we promise to keep you posted on what goes down in this exciting college football matchup. Thanks for the update on that one. Kevin, let us know when it goes final. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. The give to the single back. We've reached the two-minute warning, and this thing has been one-sided, and they hope to at least have something to feel good about going into halftime. Feeling some heat. Got his man! And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. Clock stops momentarily for the first down. They'll hurry to the line. He's looking to throw it. Snagged in the middle. It's Johnson. He's brought down. Solid pickup, but a little bit short of the first down. The hurry up now. Second down. Clock ticking. He's looking to throw. Quickly to the tight end. Stop is made at the 36, but he picked up 10 on that one and has a fresh set of downs. And the Bears come to the line with a new set of downs. They want to just keep throwing it. It's complete to the left. They make the stop, trying to pick up just a little bit at a time to get to that first down mark. To the air, it's Finley. Quick completion on the out route. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. To the air on first down. Looking left. It's caught. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. On first down from the 13-yard line. Now from inside the red zone. Setting up the screen. And they'll shove him out of bounds after the short game. Operating in the red zone here on second down. He's looking to throw. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming. Boy, they'd love to move the sticks here and take a shot at it on first and goal. In the gun, looking to throw on third down. He makes the connection. Touchdown, Baylor! Made the snag and strolled his way into the end zone. And I tell you what, that passing touchdown, man, that should spark this whole team. Like, the comeback is more than on now. Like, they got the touchdown. They cut into the lead. You, you want to get a stop and go into the half, get all the juices, all the excitement, and be like, listen, the passing game's rolling. We got this. The comeback's in full effect. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And with the extra point, every little bit counts as they get closer. So they got the touchdown, and as they kick off, really important for the defense to shut them down here. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. Fires to the wideout. Working that left side. Quick timeout call by the offense after the play. That's what's so scary about this offense. They've got guys in the perimeter that can change the game in one single play, and you saw it right there. Too much speed on the perimeter to create that explosive play. Makes a connection. Oh, it's out. Oh, and fortunate to get that one back, and as an added bonus, they get the first down. The offense calls timeout. It's the second one they've used this half. He'll come out throwing on first down. And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. From the red zone, he's going to throw it. Caught over the middle, it's James. Didn't pick up a lot there, moved it forward just a few. Just enough time to get off one final play of the half. We've got a timeout in the waning seconds of the half. Maybe a chance to get off a couple more plays. And here on second down, they'll send out the field goal unit to try to get three before the break. It's good!
gives you a little boost going to the locker room, and they'll need to finish off these final few seconds and not allow them to answer. He'll start the return inside his five. And he makes the stop on the return, and that is priority one. You don't want some big return to give up a cheap touchdown on the final play of the half. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. And it'd be easy to say these two offenses are glad we've hit halftime based on their respective performances. It would also be accurate. Turnovers and sacks have told the story so far. And you got to believe the play calling has been the issue, right? Time to shred those game plans and just get back to basics. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. The Horned Frogs will kick it away to crank up the second half. On the move from inside is five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Baylor has it back, and here comes the Bear offense. Down two possessions to start this third quarter. They'd love to build some early momentum. You ain't lying, because you only got so many possessions here in the second half, so now you're down. I gotta maximize every single one. Put your best plays together. Start this drive off on a good note. Yeah, it starts right here. Obviously, you can't get it all back on this drive, but you can create that momentum. You can create something special and some energy, but it's going to start with this offense here executing at a high level. Looking for a man. It's Fenley. Get it out on the screen. No siree. Not this time. The defense was there and ready for that one. Another punt on the way. Got to make sure those hammies and glutes all activated. Don't want any muscle pulls from overuse. The speed, the shiftiness, the elusiveness all on display in this sweet return there. They'll throw it on first down. Can't find his man as he took a shot trying to deliver that football, and it'll be second down. It's a draw. Oh, what a move. They make the stop after a pickup of three just inside the red zone at the 19. And the Horned Frogs want to pick up the tempo. On third down, he drops the throw. They're bringing heat. Couldn't find anywhere to throw the football. Just got rid of it. And that's the number one thing. Avoid disaster here. So here comes the field goal unit again. This kicker has already made three in this one. Right down the boulevard, it's good. And now the lead is extended a little far. So the kickoff team is out there ready to boot it away after putting up a field goal. Let's see what the defense can do. And it'll come out to the 25. No attempt at a return. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here, Tony. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this one. So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. The officials move it five yards back, and it's first and 15 for this offense. Not a lot of daylight. He gets one to the 32. Now on second down. Looking to throw, it's Fenley. Unloads to the wideout. Pulls it in. Put it right on him. Sweet play. Good pick up, and they'll move the chains with the first down. Well, these wide receivers work the middle of the field. So much of this is field. Understanding where the holes are in the zone or understanding how to get leverage on a man. And these wide receivers are dangerous nowadays because they do it so fast and see that so quick and make those plays over the middle. Diving up a second down pass play. And that's going to fall to the ground incomplete. That was a physical matchup there. Third down coming. 
from the gun, wants to pass. And this is going to be incomplete on third down. The Bears will try to pin them back with the punt. They're up to a half dozen kicks today. A fairly short distance here toward the sidelines, not his best work. TCU has it back in the Horn Frogs go on offense. They've got the lead here. Last time they settled for a field goal, but David got to find that balance between being aggressive and careful. Man, I think they'll take that. I got the lead, Palmer. I got the football. I got to take care of the football, put a nice drive together, and just get some kind of points on this drive. No doubt. Lots to be happy about right now if you're this team. I think for this one, though, on this drive, it's about finding the one-on-one -on -one matchups that are in your favor and then exploiting them. The Horned Frogs come to the line in the hurry-up. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Incomplete and very lucky that one wasn't picked off. And man, could they have used that? It'll be second down. They'll run it from the gun. He picks up four. That'll leave them with third and six. Quick tempo here for the offense. Wide receiver shows motion. Throws for the tight end. And a missed opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free and fourth down is coming up. And he can't quite get it down or out of bounds. It's into the end zone for a touchback. Baylor has it back and here comes the Bear offense. Makes the grab on the left. Really good job to pick up a chunk of yardage and get it out to the 39-yard line. They created a lot of breathing room with that first play of the drive. Now first down from the 39. From the gun, they'll give it on the inside. I never know if it's grammatically correct to say a team is being out physical. You hear it a lot in football, though. That's happening in this game. They are just not getting the push they need all game long up front to have any success when they decide to run it. An unforced error there. They don't get the snap off in time. Delay of game, game, offense, offense. So frustrating to see an offense lose track of the play clock and pick up a penalty like that. Back to throw. It's Fenley. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. Makes the catch and knock down. Every journey begins with a step. This offense needs to step into a third down conversion and then try to turn it into some scores and fast. Oh, they really could have used that catch. Their physical pass defense, it brings up a fourth down. He'll feel the putt and try to make something happen. They're able to put a stop to that return right at the 30-yard line. Quarterback and running back set up in the pistol. They'll run the RPO and fire to the right. And the defense had that one well covered, just a short game there. Here comes the offense on second down. And off from the shotgun. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. From the gun, wants to pass. Looking to the big tight end. And the third down pass is incomplete. And the Horned Frogs will punt this one away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Fair catch called for and made. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. They've hit a bit of a lull here, and they need to get things cranked up with this possession, Jesse. Just haven't had a rhythm these last couple of possessions, but I'll tell you, the best way to get back into one is to run the football. Establish yourselves up front the line of scrimmage and help keep these third downs manageable. Yeah, and the best news is your defense at least forced a ton of their own. So now you can go answer with that good stop while this game is still close. Let's just go keep putting more points on the board, and let's see less of the punter. Back to pass, it's Fenley. And this is dropped. Incomplete pass. He had a huge gain in his fingers, and he couldn't hold on. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. No return coming. He'll call for the fair catch. 
Okay, so here comes the offense returning to the field. Off the play fake on first down. And that pressure just engulfed him. A sack for this defense. Oftentimes with play action, you're asking the quarterback to hold on to the ball a bit longer, and you're asking this offensive line to hold up and pass pro a bit longer. Against this athletic front seven on defense, it's going to be tough. They'll try to keep that sack from wrecking this drive here on second and 15. He's looking to throw. They'll run the screen. And he never had a chance. As soon as he caught it, the defense was right there. I'm not positive, but that first down marker might be in the next county. They're setting up the screen. Not a whole lot of room there on that screen pass as it just never developed. The Horn Frogs will send out the punt unit. He'll take it on the return. And the punt team able to smack him to the ground. Baylor has it back, and here comes the Bear offense. They've had to punt the last couple of times they've had it, David, now trying to put something together. Maurice, you know how much I love punters and kickers. Like, you don't want to see them very often. Those are not guys that we want to see on the field. We want to do something else and be a little bit more productive offensively here. I think, David, on this drive, the quarterback's just got to settle down a little bit. These last few drives, looks like he's seen ghosts. We've seen him force the football. He's missed a couple throws. He needs to just take a deep breath and play within himself. Catch in the middle. It's Johnson. And they'll move the chains and get it to the 47-yard line. And the Bears have it with a first and 10. Use the play fake. Now to throw. Working that left side now. Well, you haven't seen a lot of incompletions from this guy now in his last two games out. Completed over 70% of his throws last week. He's doing it again in this game. As a head coach, you got to love the fact that your quarterback is dialed in. He got his hands on it, but couldn't hold on to it. What a time that would have been for their first pick of the game. Wants to throw on third down. He's got his man. Now with a great opportunity as they pick up the first down, they've got it at the 40. The give to the running back from the shotgun. What a good run there. He has enough for the first down. The Bears moving quickly to the line. Might as well run him until they stop him. He's got it again. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. This offense has a second down play. That's the end of the quarter, and TCU has the lead. Let's take a quick look at the national rankings to see how this playoff race is shaping up. Not only is the scoreboard on their side, but so too is time as we open the fourth. To the air, it's Fenley. They're working that left side. And they pick up just a few on that completion. From here, it would just be a 30-yard field goal try. Let's see how aggressive they're going to be to try to pick up that first down. Getting some heat. And he just throws it away. That is not what you're looking for on third down. Fourth down coming up. Now it looks as if they'll settle for the field goal try. Didn't make him sweat at all. It's good. That makes the score. TCU, 26. So after the last drive ended with a field goal, the kickoff team out there to send it away. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. Wants to throw on first down. 
And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. Moving the running back, trying to get the D to tip its hand. The sure hands. It's Cook. A little more space. Open up that playbook even more as they pick up the first down out to the 30. Well, I tell you, man, this guy's been putting on a show all game long. We've seen his decision-making. We've seen his athleticism. Because of him, they've got this huge... And the defense is all over the quarterback, and down he goes. The offensive line coach would be pulling his hair out. His head coach is okay right now because they're winning the game, but from an O-line standpoint, they've been atrocious in pass pro. A first down sack can wreck a drive. Let's see what they've got on second and 14. Quarterback on the keeper. And they try to run inside, and there is nowhere to go. Third down conversions, always a huge stat. They've got a third and long from the 27. Looking downfield, it's Hoover. Throws to the wideout. Got a wide open receiver. Bust through behind his pad. And they were looking for a chunk play, and they got it. The explosive picks up more than 30. Defense just hasn't had an answer for this guy. He has been on point. This is about as good as I've seen him play at the quarterback position. And here in the fourth quarter with the big lead, he's still taking shots. At the 20, he's got space. They finally get him on the ground with a big running play. Moves the change for the first down. And the Horned Frogs headed quickly to the line. Out of the gun, the inside give. This offense could not have executed in this situation any better, just draining some time off the clock. Red pass, it's complete. He's brought down, but he's got him inside the 10. First and goal from the eight. Defense is backed up. Shadow of the goalpost trying to defend their own end zone. How about this on first and goal? The gift to the wide receiver. He had all kinds of company as soon as he got it. He had to fight his way back just to get to the line of scrimmage. Makes his connection. That completion will take it inside the four, and the offense is threatening. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly, and that's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. If they can get it into the end zone here, they can really turn up the heat in this one. Third and goal. Back to throw. It's Hoover. Touchdown, Hornfrog! And they take it in for six more points. They put another score on the board as they try to push this winning streak to three. Now they have extended this lead, guys, starting to put the hammer, but sometimes a rivalry game can give you a little of extra fight back. And there can be no panic at this point now. You've worked too hard this offseason, David. They've had this game circled for so long. You've got to play your best football right now and fight back. And you just need something good to happen on this next possession. You've got to get the crowd back into this football game. Big rivalry. Get some emotion. Get some momentum on your side. He's not going to make it stop short of the goal line, and they are unable to extend this lead any further. And he'll just take a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. They're going to have to be more aggressive in this drive. You can't expect to win this one, David, kicking field goals. No, especially when you're trailing. you got to have a little more urgency and maybe a little more aggressiveness, Jesse. And field goals are not going to get it done down the stretch. Yeah, you're going to have to take some shots, no doubt. Bottom line, when the plays present themselves, you've just simply got to make it. Able to work it to the 39-yard line, and that'll be a first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. And he found plenty of running room on that one before the defense was finally able to get him down. 
looking to go up top on first down. That's caught. It's Burton. And good coverage by the defense, just a short game. A little bit more to go after that last completion. They'll try to pick it up on second down. He's looking to throw. Good timing on the quick out. And the defense stops him just short of the first down. Maybe needed a few more chain links to move the sticks. On third and short, they keep it on the ground here. And the Bears will move the sticks with the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Dropping back, it's Fenley. Fires to the wideout. He makes the catch. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. They'll test the right side. Got enough space. Touchdown, Bears! And they add six more to the board with that trip to the house. Precision blocking up front created the open lane, and the running back followed it beautifully. Yeah, um, it's pretty easy to follow an offensive line that makes those holes and just gives you a caravan all the way to the end zone. What an unbelievable job blocking up front. And with the lead sitting at nine, they'll try to make it a one possession game. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. TCU has it back in the Horn Frogs go on offense. From the gun, leaves it on the inside with the back. They knock him down, but not before he gets it out to the 21-yard line. Pick up a four. The Horn Frogs in the hurry up. It's a point in the game, I think, as a coaching staff, where you really challenge your offensive line. Oh, look out! There he goes! Defense on skates that time. They finally drag him down at the 42. That big play is just what they needed. Now they have it first and 10 just outside the 40. He wants to throw. Coming after it. Got it in the middle. It's Cook. They make the stop right there. Good pickup. It's still short of the first down. Looking to push the pace with the no huddle. This offense is not letting up, guys. They've got a lead here late, and they are still taking shots. They're still looking for explosive plays. This defense just has not had an answer here all game long. And the Horned Frogs are flying down the field. Man, it's so nice to have a guy that you can depend on. Like, th this offense is built around him for a reason. Just a, a good running back. You can see, gets north-south, doesn't dance, picks up positive yards, breaks tackles. He's just a really good player, and that's why this offense runs through. Out of the gun, they'll run it inside. How about the patience from this sophomore to hunt that green grass? The Horned Frogs have it with a first and ten. Wants to throw. It's Hoover. Got it. And he goes down after making the grab. Picked up a few, but he's still short of the first down marker. Looking for space. It's Payne. They get him on the ground at the three-yard line, but this defense is taking some punches. Not a lot of ground to cover and not much to defend. A big third down in the red zone. He wants it all. Reels it in in the end zone. Touchdown, TCU. The lead grows and you can sense they know how important wins are this late here in week 11. I don't know exactly what the defensive coverage was, but it certainly wasn't part of the plan to leave him that wide open. Well, I don't, I don't think they know what their defensive coverage was either. How do you leave that big guy open down in the red zone? You know the quarterback loves the big tight ends in this area. Really poor job by the defense. And the extra point splits the uprights, and the lead balloons to 15. We check in with Kevin Connors. What's going on, Kevin? All right, guys, a little update on what else is happening in college football this weekend. Vanderbilt is down big on the scoreboard, and for a program that traditionally struggles to score, I think we know where this one is headed. 
They're trailing by 15 to Auburn. For now, it's back to you fellas, but of course, if anything changes, you'll see it right here. Oh, and how about that? I know Kevin and those guys will be keeping an eye on it for us. They'll go back to the air on second down. That's caught. It's Jenkins. And there were no creases or crevices to run through, and they shove him out of bounds. On third down, going up top. And that defense gets to him, and down he goes at the nine. Coach has no choice here. The offense has to stay on the field, down multiple possessions this late. Fourth down attempt coming. Makes the grab well past the sticks. Ripped off a huge chunk play on that one as he gets the first down before he steps out of bounds. I think if you're the head coach at this point, you're telling your offense, it doesn't matter what's happened up to this point of the game. Obviously, things haven't gone our way, but we have a chance to execute in a two-minute situation and give ourselves a chance to win. Let's go do it one play at a time. Not much feels better to an offense than to get some breathing room with an explosive play like that. Now first and ten from the 39. To the air, it's Fenley. Working the middle, it's complete. And I love when my quarterback sees zone and knows exactly where to go with the football. Sees the wide receiver running the drag route, knows when to throw it, pulls the trigger for the easy completion. Pressure coming. Grabbed over the middle, it's Jenkins. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. The Bears will hustle to the line. Nice job by the running back catching the football and understanding where the first down marker was. I got to go get that first down. Did a nice job. Trying to convert this second and short. And defensively, this is exactly what you want, right? You got the big lead, so you can play big zone coverages. Just keep the ball in front of you. Keep your eye on the quarterback. Rally to the football. Gang tackle. And you're going to win this game. It's first and ten from the 31. He'll just keep slinging it. Unloads to the wideout. And that incomplete pass caused by the big hit on first down. Second down coming second down here and maybe they've got time to get one more snap off before the two minute warning catch in the middle it's Reese a quick tackle made but he's got plenty for the first down they've marched to the red zone and here they go he got a hand in there knocks it away incomplete long drive continues as the offense keeps working the ball down the field on second down looking again to throw Makes the catch. It's Jenkins. Nice patience by the quarterback here, working against zone coverage. He was allowing his receiver an opportunity to find that open space in the defense before pulling the trigger. Looking for the end zone. Can't make the grab as he was looking for his man right at the goal line. Down by multiple possessions. You can't come up empty on this drive. They'll go for it on fourth down. Finds his man, it's Johnson. Will not get there, a fourth down stop. This offense is so deep, it's teetering on the edge of a safety. He'll try to keep this clock moving on the ground. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. He'll put the tight end in motion. From the gun to Gale, looking for room. He got a bunch and looked close to getting a lot more, but he's got the first down. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. Quick pass on the fly motion. Still on his feet at the 35. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. And the Horned Frogs come to the line with a fresh set of downs. And the quarterback will just drop to a knee. No matter how much college football changes, realignment, all of that kind of stuff, rivalries are consistent, and winning rivalry games, well, that's just the best. Because they hate each other so much. So you take the field against your rival, you're able to put forth a performance like that. 
That is worth its weight in gold, David. Unbelievable effort here by the winning team and bragging rights now for me. Bragging rights for a while. It's, it's a fun thing to be able to accomplish. Now we also got to take in the next couple games because this is always there's a letdown that naturally happens after these big rivalry wins. We feel like our chest is poked out. We got to look on to the next game, focus in on this next one. That's going to do it for us. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, our entire broadcast team, I'm Reese Davis. This has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.